think we have reached a, a really exciting moment in, in engineering, neuroengineering, when there have been so many advances. We had individuals paralyzed for up to 13 years. With complete spinal cord injury, we are not standing and taking independent steps. Joining me now is Professor G. Cortin, the co-founder of NeuroRestore. And we are going to talk about groundbreaking spinal cord implants that's helping people regain movement after paralysis. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you with us today. Hello. Hello. We are going to talk a little bit about some of the science that you're currently doing. But first, I need to understand you bridge neurosurgery and neuroscience. How has this interdisciplinary approach helped shape your work so far? Yeah, normally, I should be here today with a neurosurgeon, yes. Jocelyn Block, yes. uh, who I met on June 27, 2012, mm -hmm. when then there was a paralyzed rat that was walking again, and my dream was to operate the transition to humans. Yeah. And clearly, I needed a partner in the clinic. Mm -hmm. That's when I met Jocelyn. And, and our synergy was so strong, so obvious, that we could go all the way from molecules to application in humans that we decided to unify our strength in one center, NeuroRestore, yeah. that really had the philosophy to go all the way from like rodents, non-human primate models, proof of concept in human, and even a company we founded for really the real life impact. And you've done remarkable things together. So you've actually made headlines because you enable paralyzed patients to walk again, which is uh, remarkable. How is that even possible? Well, the concept is reasonably simple. Mm -hmm. uh, when there's a spinal cord injury, the brain sends signal yeah. to the five centimeter of spinal cord in the middle of the back that mm -hmm. normally control leg movement. But because of the injury, the signal is interrupted. Yeah. But this region is still intact. So the idea was to reactivate this region with electrical stimulation. But the way we do it is very precise because we activate the spinal cord with a spatiotemporal pattern that resemble the way the spinal cord is activated naturally by the brain. Okay, so if I were a patient, how would that look like? One day I would be paralyzed and how long would this take to work or? So the idea is that uh, the patient is coming have a surgical intervention mm -hmm. to insert an electrode array yeah. that is positioned between the vertebra and this five centimeter of spinal cord responsible for leg movement. Mm -hmm. Then it is linked to a pacemaker so implantable pulse generator uh, that are typically used for you know, pacemaker or deep brain yeah. stimulation. Except that this device is more intelligent because it can be controlled in real time. Okay. So it has it responds very rapidly and it can send multiple waveforms. And then after you have to program the stimulation because of this complexity. Yep. So the patient undergoes, let's say, a week of programmation, then rehabilitation for many, many weeks because it takes a long time to really rebuild the yes. muscle and also reorganize the neuronal pathway to see eventually after but depend between two to six months we see the recovery of independent walking in our patients. But that's still amazing and that's patients who's been paralyzed for maybe years. We had individuals paralyzed for up to 13 years. With complete spinal cord injury we are not standing and taking independent steps. Where, what's the possibilities with this technology? Where do you, what, what do you wish for? I think we have reached a, a really exciting moment in, in engineering, neuroengineering, when there have been so many advances in terms yeah. of how to stimulate the spinal cord very precisely. All the company doing BCI, mm -hmm. which we have been doing, decoding the intention to actually control the stimulation. And I expect in the next five years that there will be an explosion in the number of trials, labs in the world that's going to build up on our work to try to make it better yeah. with uh, technology, algorithm, etc. And what's going to happen is that within the next five years, we will change, I think, how society perceives the permanence of paralysis. Yeah. I think that what we show now is that we don't cure paralysis. People are still living in their wheelchair, but they are not no condemned to the wheelchair. They can stand, they can take a few steps. They make them feel better yeah. in their, their physiology and how they perceive the world and, and their integration in society. So life improvements is basically what it's all about. Correct. It's not yet a cure. We will continue working on that goal. But at least I hope we will bring a, a huge improvement in quality of life. Fantastic insights. Thank you so much for all the work you're doing in this field. And thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me today. <laughs> Have a great conference. Thank you. Thanks 
for watching, but now an important disclaimer. The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.